You know, matrices really are the key to putting together information so that we can actually analyze it and actually look at it in a clear way. And I don't think this can be better illustrated by looking at the systems of equations where we have lots of unknowns, lots of equations, and it looks sort of unwieldy. Take a look at this example. Here I've got three equations in three unknowns. A lot of stuff is going on. It looks really complicated. But if we use the notion of a matrix, we can actually make this a simpler object to start to analyze. In fact, what we can do with systems of equations of this sort is to produce what's called an augmented matrix. That really is just a regular matrix, but we're going to put a little dashed line to indicate where the equal sign really should be. Now remember, with these kind of matrices, we want to really be careful with the bookkeeping because we want to make sure that when we look down any particular column, we're going to see only the coefficients for a particular variable. And we usually traditionally have the x, the y, and the z. So when you're given a mess like this and you want to convert it, the thing to do is to remember that we want to always write things in the form something times x plus something times y plus something times z equals, and then the constant. So if you want to produce the augmented matrix for this system, what you would do is you would just rip off the coefficients and put it together. So here, and I'm always going to put the x first, so this is going to be a 2, just write the 2. Then the y, which is a 1, there's an invisible 1 there. You might think it's 0, but it's 1. And the z is a negative 1. And that equals 1. So I put that here. But since that's on the other side of the equal sign, I augment the matrix this way. That's why it's called an augmented matrix. It's sort of like a matrix and another little teeny matrix here, and they're augmented together. What about the second equation? Well, you may be tempted to write 1 and then negative 3. But remember, you always want to write the first column is going to be x's. So here, this person was being really sneaky or mean or just careless, reckless, and to not put the x first. So here, we've got to put that first not as a 3, but as a negative 3. So in fact, this is a negative 3 for x. What's the y coefficient? An invisible 1. What's the z coefficient? Well, there's no z. So what do you do? That means that there must have been a 0. So there's actually a, an invisible 0 in front of the, the z coefficient there. And I see that that equals 5. And finally here, oh wow, this is a real mess because there's stuff on both sides. So you'd bring everything over, all the variables over to the, to the left-hand side. And so we'd see that the x coefficient is a 1. The y coefficient doesn't exist. That means it's a 0, invisible 0. And the z coefficient, you might say 1, but you've got to bring it over first. It becomes a negative 1. And then that 2 remains here. That's the augmented version of this system. Why would you want to do that? Well, it's a nice rectangular grid where you're focusing on just the, the important pieces of information. And we understand that this column means x, this column means y, this column means z, and this column means, column means the constants. And now we can actually use the techniques we have developed with respect to matrices in order to figure out what x, y, and z are.